Good morning, New City. My name is Thurman Williams. I'm the pastor at New City West End, and I get the privilege this morning or this afternoon, whenever time you're watching this video, I get the privilege of bringing the devotional today. And that's just one of the ways that we're trying as the, the pastors and leaders at New City to be able to be there for you in the midst of this crazy, unprecedented time. And uh, we don't know how long it's going to be. We don't know the extent of it, but how can we be there for one another as brothers and sisters in Christ in the midst of that time? And let me uh, say again, on behalf of all the, the leaders here at New City, if there's any way that we might be um, of service to you and your families, please don't hesitate to let us know. You know, something I was looking at yesterday, just in the statistics as we follow the, the spread of the coronavirus in this area in particular, that our zip code 63112 is actually the second highest in all the city of St. Louis in terms of the number of COVID cases. And this is the place where many of us live. It's where our office is. It's where the West End Church meets. Um, so much of our ministry life happens right here in this area. And, uh, and so this area is suffering. And so we suffer with it. So one thing I wonder if you ask sometimes, sometimes a question that comes to my mind is, Lord, what do we do? What do you want from us in this time? How are we supposed to stand? How are we supposed to live? What does life look like? What does faithfulness look like in the midst of this time, in this midst of this place? And I wanted to read, uh, for us during this time from Micah chapter six, um, a very familiar verse, chapter six, verse eight. Um, but before I read that, I wanted to read some of the context leading into it. And actually it's in the midst of really an indictment where the Lord is coming uh, to his people in the midst of his covenant people who are not living in line with that covenant, who are living honestly lives of unfaithfulness and injustice and immorality. And the Lord comes to them and says, don't you remember who I am? Don't you remember what I've done for you before? And the people's response is basically, Lord, what do you want from us? What do you want us to do? And, and here's what they say. This is from verse six. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of oil. Shall I give the, my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? And they just get more and more outlandish as they go. Lord, what do you want from us? To kind of a ridiculous example there at the end. And what's underneath that? And sometimes I, I relate to that is they're saying, God, what do you want us to do to appease you? What do you want us to do to, to make you happy? And honestly, in order to give us what you what we want, Lord, what do, what do you want us to do? And what the Lord communicates to them in this famous verse and what's, what's behind that is it's not at all about what you need to do for me. It's about what I have already done for you to bring you to myself, to make you my people. I am your God and you are called to be my people. And so I'm calling you to respond out of that. And so what's the call he gives in verse eight? He has told you, O oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? Here's what the Lord wants from us. To do justice, to love kindness or to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. What does he call us to? To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with him. And so the question for us is, what does that look like in the midst of this time and place? What does it mean to do justly? And it can mean lots of different things. It can mean things such as advocating for those who are most victimized by this virus and speaking up and saying, listen, there are some systemic inequalities that lead to some people receiving less care than others. And that isn't right. And we want to stand and speak for those who may not have the opportunity and privilege to speak for themselves. What does it mean to love mercy? One of the powerful examples of that is in Jesus' Good Samaritan parable, where he describes a Samaritan who goes above and beyond in caring for the one who had fallen and been left for dead in the middle of the road. Jesus says he's the one who had mercy on him. And that's our call for those around us. That's what it looks like 
to have mercy on those around us. And finally, the call is to walk humbly with him. What does that look like? What does that mean? It means walking in light of the fact that God is our creator, that God is our redeemer. But even more than that, that he is our father and we are his beloved children. And so we walk in light of that glorious relationship that we have with him. And so the things that we do to do justice and to love mercy and to walk with him are not in order to try and appease God, but they're living life as God's people in the midst of this time, in the midst of this place. And what is our blessed hope in the midst of that? Because honestly, you know, we can't do that ourselves. We get tired. We don't have the wisdom to do it. We don't have the power within ourselves to be able to do it. But Micah points us to it. In this book, he points us to the ultimate shepherd king, the one who has done justly all of his life and whose death on the cross was to satisfy divine justice on our behalf. The one who's always loved mercy and who's walked with mercy and who, who has given us incredible mercy so that we might know God. And the one who more than anyone else has walked humbly with God, the one who in himself is very nature God, humbled himself to become a servant, even to the point of death, even death on a cross. And so we look to Jesus Christ as the one who gives us the power, not just the example, but the power to be able to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. And so today, as we do that, whether it's the West End, South City, U City, wherever we are, let us do that in light of what Jesus Christ has already done for us. God bless you, God's people. Amen.